So we're going to learn how to create a template. We're going to use a report and add a spark line to it for trending. And then we're going to drill into uh, creating a map report. Okay. Now, a lot of you might know this, but for those of you who don't, if you find yourself repeatedly creating reports, I have the same object. So, for example, you can see that I have a logo here, uh, some contact information, uh, a built-in field for execution time. If, if you are creating reports that are constantly using some of these same objects, then you can create a template for it. And creating a template is really going to uh, help you be more efficient in your report building because some of the work is already going to be done for you and it's easily accessible. So, for example, I use this um, to create a template and then I add it into my template options here. You can see Sherry underscore template. So, we're going to learn how to do that. Okay, the next thing that we're going to cover is the sparkline and it's a really great tool to use when you're trying to trend your data and you want to show cycles of measurements. And now it's also nice because the object doesn't require any number or points for additional representation. Um, you also have several different formatting options and you're going to learn how to use some expressions and variables um, to dynamically change the color schema in your report. Okay. And uh, we already have a question, does this session apply to Report Builder 3.0? Yes, you can use some of these objects in Report Builder 3.0, so that's a great question. Lastly, we're going to take our Sparkline report and drill through it to get to a, a brand new report that we're going to use with the map, and we want visual representation of where our customers are located. So my goal for you today is to take away some of these ideas and some of these how-tos and be able to implement them in your environment and not only feel good about the work that you're producing, but have your managers actually be wow wowed uh, about the reports that you've developed for the company. Okay, so enough of the slide deck. I don't like doing too many slides because I, I am the same way as probably most of you you are when you are doing a presentation or watching a webinar during a lunch hour maybe you want to see some action so that's what we're going to do so the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to create a solution now I know that there are some some newbies out there some some very junior people so the way that we can create a project is we can say create right here we can select this drop down option for new project or we can go to file and select a new project. So I'm going to select a new report server project and we will call this, uh, let's call this awesome webinar. So that's the name of my project. It's changing my solution name by default. You can ch make a change to that if you want. I'm going to leave it as is. Click OK. And we're going to load this up real quick. So you don't see anything. You don't see a solution. Um, and so the way that we can access our solution is we can come up here and select this button right up here, Solution Explorer, or we can go to Tools and make sure that we've got it checked to show our solution. So if we go to Tools, Options, go to Projects and Solutions, and you want to make sure that you check that Always Show Solution. Okay, so mine is checked. I did close it out uh, intentionally. So to bring that back up, go to View, and you want to select your Solution Explorer. Okay, so we got our Solution Explorer up. The first thing that we want to do, because this is an option in um, SSRS 2008R2, is having shared data sources and shared data sets. Uh, shared data sources are a great way to basically create multiple reports in your project and point to one data source. That way it's not embedded in each individual report if you have to make a change to the connection string. Same thing with our shared data sets. If, uh, if you really like that query, it's getting a lot of the results that you need um, in future reports that you plan on building in this project, then you can share your data sets and use it in those other reports. You can share your data sets with other developers as well. 
So we're going to add a data source. And I am connecting to the AWDW 2008R2 database. So AdventureWorks DW 2008R2. So let me just point to that real quick. It's on my local machine, so I'm just going to put a period here. Select my database, AdventureWorks DW 2008R2. Make sure my connection works. Click OK and OK. So we have our shared data source. Now, what I want to do is I want to create my very first report. And this is what I'm going to do in order to create my template. So I'm going to add a new report, new item. So I'm manually creating this. OK. So we're going to select report. And we're going to give this report a name. We'll just call this awesome template. I'm totally driving this into the ground. Awesome. <laughs> I promise, after this session, I won't call it awesome anymore. I'll think of a different adjective. So we're going to name it Awesome Template. Now, I know in every report that I am building, I always have to include the, um, my, my company logo and my contact information. So how I want to do this is I want to add that information into the header of my report. Now, there's a couple ways that we can access the header. You can select that button there or that button there. So you have the header here and the footer right there. Now another way is you can click somewhere out here, right click. This is not the design pane area. Right click and select that option. So we're going to right click and add page header. Okay, so our header is viewable. Now what I want to do is I want to add an image into this template. So I'm going to right click and say add image. And I want to select my company logo. So once I've added that in there, I'm just going to click on it and drag it out right to my header. So it says, okay, do you want to give it a name? Do you want to format it any? Do you want to add a border or an action on it? Nope, I'm, I'm going to leave it as is. I'm not going to make any additional changes to it. So I'm going to click OK. Yeah, you know, let me just make a couple adjustments here. So we're going to pull that out. Now, the other thing that I want to do is I want to add the contact information. So I need to pull out a text box for my table. As you can see, my uh, toolbox is not available for me to choose from. So I need to go to View and select Toolbox. 